Welcome back to Melon Lave Wargaming. This is War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, and we are playing a play by email campaign, playing as Japan in Scenario 1. Uh, doing the setup for the December 19th turn. Gonna try to make this short and sweet, because right now uh, my opponent is getting his turns to me really fast. So, uh, lots of turnaround time, trying to spend more time playing and less time talking. Not that I don't like doing this, but. I do try to be a good opponent and get the turns out quick. Um, so, starting in China, um, a lot of these places where we're in contact, we're mostly doing probing attacks. I don't want to accidentally attack a unit that's superior, especially when just... There's, there's really just no excuse to get pushed back in China right now. Uh, not yet. Um, so, hanging pretty steady. One exception of that is going to be Yi-Chang. Um, we outnumber these guys badly enough that I'm, I'm willing to attack. In fact, I think his moving troops into there was probably an accident. Um, with Hong Kong having fallen, I've already had um, destroyer minesweepers ready to go, so they're going to head right in. Um, once that's clear, we can start sending in troop transports to uh, move, which which division is it, the 38th Division, um, over to the Philippines. Uh, Rangoon, we're noticing a significant uptick in troops. It was about 20,000 before, now it's about 31,000, so they're reinforcing. Uh, there, there isn't too much I can do about that with the, the amount of fighters here. Um, I'm pretty sure my Bettys aren't going to want to attack there, even with the zeros I have available, and that's fine by me. Um, I don't want to send them into a death trap either. So, I mean, basically we're, we're probably going to see a significant defense of Rangoon, and it's going to be hard to get through, and uh, that's going to be fine. Um, as it stands, I think I have two additional divisions that are headed this way, although there's a pretty good chance I'm going to have one of them stop in the Philippines. Um, so, I mean, the the advantage of that would, is going to be, what I'd like to do is just wrap up the Philippines fast. And if I can wrap up the Philippines fast, then those army units become available to use elsewhere. Um, so Rangoon, uh, Sumatra, Java, um, those would kind of be the obvious places to send those units. Um, the sooner I can close the Burma Road, the better. Uh, the sooner uh, that gets cut off, the um, more progress I'm going to make quickly in China is really what it comes down to. Um, that, that said, um, the Allies are being fairly conservative, and what that means is they're going to choose their battles and where they choose to fight, they're probably going to fight really effectively. Uh, so what we're seeing is one of those places is going to be Rangoon uh, and Burma generally. Um, so it's just something I have to be prepared for. So when, when I go to Rangoon, um, it's going to have to be in force. Um, no no half-assed operations into Burma. Uh, coming down a bit, um, we're trying to get as many forces as we can into Johori Baru. I think there's a pretty good chance that, especially with the, the jungle cover, we're going to be able to hold this. Um, yeah, I, for the time being, I'm, I'm doing a bombardment. Um, that'll allow me to confirm how much AV he has there. At Sambas, I finally remembered that I can shock attack safely here, uh, so that's going to happen. In the Philippines, I'm still trying to pick off this last submarine if I can. Um, we've also got uh, multiple tank regiments up here in Bayombang, so... But yeah, two tank regiments is probably going to be enough to dislodge whatever he's got there. Um, and then for the time being, I want to see if I can continue to bomb Clark and run its supplies down. Uh, so we just bombarded Kagan last turn. Uh, this turn I'm going to do a bombardment. I want to verify the amount of AV that's present. Uh, we've got a small infantry unit here, and we're also landing a tank regiment. I was originally going to land these in the same hex as the infantry, but I no longer see any reason why they can't just go forward one more hex 
and then we can drop them uh, basically two X's next to uh, Kagayan instead of one. Get the extra firepower there faster. Moving down south a little bit, uh, Carrier Division 3 is now at the entryway of the Serum Sea and it's undetected. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to move him for another turn, uh, get him basically into the middle of the Banda Sea. And, I mean, if, if they're still undetected after that, maybe, like, I'll get even closer. Uh, but the idea is, once they get detected, that's when I'm going to go into max speed mode. Um, so, we'll, we'll get here. If they spot us, then I'll go ahead and step on the gas and attack Java. Um, I'm a little bit less interested in Darwin, just because, like, we've got a singleton here, a uh, singleton here, and it's classified as a PG, so not very valuable. Um, but over at Java, we've got like <laughs> one, two, three, four, I'll call it five task forces. And uh, this is a task force of five ships. Um, this one's four ships. Uh, so, and that one's two. So, just the, there's so much more to hit over here. Um, and then, heck, I could always come back up here and, and maybe pick off some of this traffic if I want. Um, yeah, with how much there's at Palembang, that, that looks like a really nice uh, second target to go after. So, that's what's going on there. Uh, so, truck. I'm a little disappointed that these two submarines showed up at truck when they did, because I don't like them knowing where the Kido Butai is at all times, because when they don't know where it is, that uncertainty... Um, hinders their operations. Um, it's very likely that the presence of these two subs have, um, like they haven't detected the KB directly, but the Kate's flying search out of here would overfly the submarine. Uh, the submarine suddenly notices there's a whole lot more Kate's flying on patrol than there were, a, you know, there was a day ago, and you know, he can put two and two together. Now, uh, so we've essentially captured Tulagi already. Um, the flag hasn't changed, but it will tomorrow, or today, I guess I should say. Um, this is going to be the Guadalcanal landing, but with this enemy force, which I believe includes a cruiser, um, it's too dangerous to have these guys go right to Guadalcanal. Uh, so what I want to do first is, is deal with these guys. So for now, I'm just having uh, the Guadalcanal Force stop to the north. Uh, the two Lagi guys are all but completely unloaded, uh, so they can just pull out. Um, and then my covering force is going to uh, move straight to two Lagi in case these guys are moving north uh, to try to catch these guys, because these guys have been detected. Um, you should have these guys too? No, they haven't. Um, so so f all this cruiser knows is here is this guy. Okay? So, decent likelihood he's going to go north, um, and when he does that, one, hopefully he runs into a submarine and gets torpedoed, and then two, instead of meeting this guy, because these guys are going to retreat, he's going to run into these guys who he has not detected, uh, two battleships, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and that's going to be a very, very bad time for him. Last thing I want to mention is Pearl Harbor, because we have... A rather substantial looking task force right here. Um, two cruisers, two tankers. Uh, who knows if that's accurate, uh, but they're on a direct course to Pearl Harbor, and it's gonna probably take them two phases to make it, because that's what, five spaces, maybe six? Six. Yeah, so it's unlikely they're gonna move six spaces in a single turn. Um, so I have one submarine already in line, and probably another three that I can get in this line in time to make an intercept here. Um, so that I, I'm, I have no problem going full wolf pack on this guy uh, when it's a five ship task force that seems to include cruisers and some other large merchants, whether they're actually tankers, I don't really know. Um, but it's not just destroyers, so let's get after them. All right, so uh, that's going to do it for the setup. See you for the combat replay.
And we're underway. Combat replay for December 19th in progress. That's kind of nice. I ended up picking up all those islands in the Luzon Strait while only having to actually land on one. Suddenly a lot of activity out here. So this looks like it might be a supply run going out to uh, some of the near islands. Maybe Pago Pago or something like that. Hello. Looks like a Northampton class. It's the Astoria. Yeah, you're up against two battleships. Got some bad news for you. Would be nice if we could hit him with something other than an anti-aircraft gun. How about some of those main batteries? 14 centimeter, that's better than an anti-aircraft gun. I think you probably have something on the order of 36 or 40 mil centimeters. guns. There we go. And it got a, I think it said side armor penetration. Yeah, and it went straight from small fires to pretty intense fires. Yeah, belt armor penetration, belt armor penetration, that's a kill. Destroyer got away. Oh well, it's the cruiser we wanted. Ooh, these guys are close at night. Uh, we are in danger of torpedoes. Alright, we opened range pretty quickly. That was good. Didn't make it very far, did ya? thousand yards again. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think this is the same two as the last time. So hopefully that means these are the guys that have already fired their torpedoes. Hey, look at somebody different. Oh, come on. I don't care how low on ammo you are. You're not so low, you can't engage them. Absolute snipers with torpedoes today. Finish this guy off, come on. Thank you. 
can't seem to be able to get a hit on the water line on this guy. It's just all superstructure damage. There we go. Deck penetration. Might have caused some flotation damage. There we go. Now it looks like we finally got him. Ooh, shoot, we just had a collision. We don't have anyone reported with heavy damage, so I don't know how bad the collision was. But it's not bad enough for heavy damage. No kills. Uh, becoming a common theme. There's so few enemy fighters in the air that they just uh, end up withdrawing. That's a shame. Hopefully we're at least causing disruption to support this river crossing. Okay, disabled six guns. Lots of bad weather all over the place. Well, it's nice to get a few of get rid of a few of these aircraft. Uh, not that they're all that important, but they keep attacking, so they're an annoyance.
floor Blenheim, <laughs> floor, four Blenheim ones total. Surprise there's no fighter cover in Palembang. Uh, so this is a troop transport ship, but no troop casualties reported. I should probably check these guys and just make sure they're not selected to carry bombs. Wouldn't that be embarrassing if that minesweeper kills one of my submarines because I accidentally set them to carry bombs instead of torpedoes. Alright, so float plane probably flying out of Puerto Princesa. Just managed to set a cargo ship on fire with a bomb hit. I'm really hoping that, um, to not shooting anybody down, they just end up destroying their planes when they land at a base that's reported damage to 75%. Well, if they didn't know Carrier Division 2's in the band to see, they do now. Ooh, look at all that traffic at Flores. So, three ships down, uh, no casualties being reported, so apparently not carrying troops. So, Kagan, we do have an advantage in AV, it's just probably not enough to dislodge them. Bam Bang, they're surprisingly strong here. Got a pretty well-equipped division there. Of course, they, um, they don't have enough to deal with tanks here. Even though assault odds are in their favor, uh, they can't hurt us. Um, which means I should be shock attacking. So here's Shahore Baru probing attack. Um, 
Yeah, our AV's fine. We're really not in danger of an overrun here, and since this is a jungle hex, the defensive bonus is pretty good. So even if they want to counterattack from Singapore, I think we can hold this space. Tulagi is ours. Who is this in the Gilberts? Acquiring minds want to know. Sambas, I finally remembered to do a shock attack. And look what happens. Uh, it did cost me a squad, but I'd say that would have been worth it doing it turns ago, considering I've got like, yeah, I mean, 40 plus enemy squads destroyed. All right, reviewing the turn, we're showing a modest point gain, which I think is um, maybe a little misleading. Uh, I don't think this was a lackluster turn at all. Um, we don't sink too many valuable ships of the enemies, and sinking a heavy cruiser, um, that by itself, I think, makes this a great turn. Uh, turning into air losses, um, overall 11 to 8, um, not all that huge of a deal. Um, our losses were mainly, or I'm sorry, our, our kills were mainly led by that um, Blenheim raid uh, in Thailand uh, because we took care of uh, one of the fighter escorts and then five of the bombers ended up going down. Um, aside from that, just um, the seagulls that went down with the Astoria P-35 probably crashing at Clark Field after their failed strafing attack and uh, their operational loss of a uh, transport aircraft. On our side, it's just operational losses all around. Um, I'm not sure how we ended up with so many, um, but that is what it is. Um, eight operational losses for the day, which is very high. Ship sunk, we sank quite a few. Uh, a lot of these are Hong Kong evacuees. Um, we were worried, wondering what happened with all of them last turn. Well, now we know, uh, and we took care of them. And of course, the, uh, the Astoria and the Drayton being the major prizes today. Going over to the theaters, over in China, with the capture of Hong Kong, the um, ships there put to sea, uh, Last turn I was asking why I didn't see them. Uh, the answer is actually pretty obvious. The scouts fly um, during the morning and afternoon pulses. Land combat takes place at the end of the turn, uh, so the ships put to sea after the scout planes flew. So, of course, we didn't see them. Uh, so we saw them this turn, and we hunted six merchant ships down. Uh, there were also two motor torpedo boats that we kept engaging over and over again, uh, but they managed to escape. Our minesweepers at Hong Kong have swept 120 mines. Uh, that's probably pretty close to being done already. At Yichang, we routed the 39th Corps that appeared there. Uh, they were just badly under strength. And then we made probing attacks at that little wooded area northeast of Xinyang. That's just a headquarters unit. Um, maybe because of the last campaign where there was a strong concentration of enemy forces that's what i was expecting this time around uh, but not so this time and then up north uh, near cheng ting uh, the enemy unit there is uh, 198 av compared to r379 so we can probably start working on him Malayan Burma at Temelo, we were trying to support a river crossing with airstrikes the airstrikes did essentially nothing, uh, but we didn't auto-shock when we crossed the river anyway, so that probably means that's an exceptionally weak defending force. We had a few naval strikes uh, at Singapore. We targeted a minesweeper, but our buddies didn't bother carrying torpedoes and can't hit anything with bombs. Uh, we had better luck at Palembang. They did carry bombs, so 
we sank a transport there, uh, but there were at least two. Um, worth noting, there was no cap at Palembang, um, and the cap at Singapore was down to like a single aircraft. Um, and those aircraft are basically running from us or, you know, taking damage and then aborting and landing back at base. Uh, so we really didn't have nearly as many kills as we would have liked to have. We had a probing attack at Shahori Baru uh, that basically showed that the AV numbers are even between the opposing forces there, which is going to benefit the defender in a jungle hex. So whoever is attacking is probably going to take more casualties. So the lesson for now, uh, just don't attack. And it means as long as, uh, if, if they want to attack, they're probably not going to move us either. Um, so we can just hold tight and let the situation north of Johore Baru resolve itself um, and then get ready for our eventual push on Singapore. I'm not going to do a separate slide for Burma, uh, but that was where the most of the sparks were flying in terms of air combat today with four Blenheim bombers and one Blenheim fighter shot down by our cap. Pretty quiet day in the Philippines as we're um, essentially just besieging uh, Clark, Manila, and Catabo at the moment. Um, so we had tanks landing in Butuan, which are going to participate in the Catabo operation. Uh, and then we had an armored assault at Bayombang, which is basically going to be a precursor to moving into Manila. Um, the enemy force is held there, probably because they don't have anywhere to retreat to. Um, we disabled a whole bunch of combat squads, but took no casualties, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a shock attack, since they apparently can't hurt our tanks very well. A little bit of bad news this turn is that Kingfisher's flying out of Puerto Princesa, bombed a cargo ship and set it on fire. Uh, that cargo ship is currently over there in the tip of Borneo, uh, but it's packing up troops to move over to, um, I believe, Panay. Moving a bit south, Carrier Division 2 has pushed into the Banda Sea. They sank a pair of cargo ships and a troop transport nearby. Um, and we're also just seeing a whole lot of uh, ships and potential targets being detected, uh, in particular that concentration of ships over by Flores, which is kind of looking like an inviting target moving forward. And finally, taking a look at the, uh, the Solomons and kind of the rest of the Pacific, um, probably the most important event of the day was the naval intercept that took place near Rennell Island in the Solomons, uh, resulting in the loss of the cruiser Astoria, along with the Mahan-class destroyer. Um, so during that battle, two of our light cruisers collided. Uh, one of them basically was undamaged, uh, but the Kitakami is moderately damaged and is going to uh, head back to truck for a repair assessment and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up uh, going all the way back to Japan to deal with that major damage. We grabbed Tulagi, nothing unexpected there. Um, notice that there's a bogey out there in the Gilberts that's eight ships headed east. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the setup probably. Um, and then I lastly just want to mention at Pearl Harbor, we've got a lot of activity there. Uh, six instances of submarine versus destroyer combat. Uh, four of those were initiated by the destroyers and just two by our submarines. So basically a reversal of fortunes from last turn and uh, no damage to anybody resulting from this. Uh, they're just getting us to waste torpedoes for the time being. All right, so that's going to wrap up this turn. We'll see you for the setup for the 20th. Thanks for watching.